Hello. Welcome to Yan Wu, part two. I was actually quite excited to get home and do this. I've been thinking about the first one all day. Nothing worth sharing. Real teaching and real learning. Since high antiquity, the source vehicle has been transcendence and direct realization, with teachers and apprentices joined in understanding, with nothing haphazard about it. This is why the man who was to become the second Zen patriarch stood in the snow and cut off his arm to prove his sincerity to Bodhidharma, the first patriarch. This is why the sixth patriarch worked pounding rice in the fifth patriarch's community at Hang Mei, Huang Mei. This is why other Zen adepts worked diligently for twenty or thirty years. How could the seal of approval be given lightly? In general, genuine Zen seekers set forth their teachings only after observing the learner's situation and potential. Real teachers smelt and refined their students hundreds and thousands of times. Whenever the learner has any biased attachments or feelings of doubt, the teacher resolves them and breaks them and breaks through them and causes the learner to penetrate through to the depths and let go of everything, so that the learner can realize equanimity and peace while in action. Real teachers transform learners so that they reach a stage where one cannot be broken, like a leather bag that can withstand any impact. Only after this does the Zen teacher let the transformed student go forth to deal with people and help them. This is no small matter. If the student is incomplete in any respect, then the model is not right and the unripe student comes out all uneven and full of excesses and deficiencies and appears ridiculous to real adepts. Therefore, in order to teach the Dharma, the ancient worthies worked for completeness and correctness and clarity in all facets. This means inwardly having one's own practice as pure as ice and jade and outwardly having a complete and well-rounded mastery of techniques. A perspicacious, perspicuous, perpicacious, perspicacious, that's a weird word, perspicacious, perspicacious, Anyway, a really high, super cool, above everything and very astute view of all conscious beings and skilled in, in, in interchange. When such adepts meet with potential learners, they examined each and every point in terms of the fundamental. When the learners finally did understand, then the teachers employed techniques to polish and refine them. It was like transferring water from one vessel to another vessel with the utmost care not to spill a drop. Among the methods the adepts employed, we see driving off the plowman's axe, or taking away the hungry man's food. Unfathomable to spirits and ghosts, the genuine Zen adepts relied solely on, great, on one great liberation. They did not revel in typical deformities of pretenders to enlightenment and grow the horns characteristics of other species at ease, without striving, uh, without striving at contrived activity. They were just two saints of discipline and virtue, who had left behind the dust of sensory attachments. There is a saying by Bodhidharma, those whose actions and understanding were in accord we call spiritual ancestors. Why does a Zen teacher? Going on pilgrimages in search of enlightened teachers, going beyond convention. Basically, this is done because of the importance of the great matter of birth and death. 
contacting people to help them is being a good spiritual friend, bringing to light the causal, con the causal conditions of the great matter operates on the principle of mutual seeking and mutual aid. Ever since ancient times, it is only those who are able to bear the responsibility of being a vessel of the great Dharma who have been able to undertake the role of a Zen teacher and stand like a wall a mile high. These people have been tempered and refined in the blast furnace of teachers of the source, taking shape under the impact of their hammers and tongs until they became real and true from beginning to end. Otherwise, they do not appear in the world as teachers. If they do appear, they are sure to startle a crowd and move the people, because their own realization and acceptance of the responsibility of communicating truth was not hasty or haphazard. When they passed it on to others, they were not rushed or careless. We all know the classic example. Master Rang saying, sorry, Master Rang staying with the sixth patriarch at Khao Ke for eight years, Matsalik, Wan Yin Temple, Dashan and Log Tan, Yang Shan and Gui Shan, Lin Shi and Hangbo. In every case, it took at least 10 or 20 years of close association between teacher and pupil before the pupil was fully prepared to become a teacher himself. That is why, with the genuine Zen teachers, every word and every phrase, every act and every state resonated with the music it resonated with the music of gold and jade. Virtually no one in the latter generations has been able to see into what they were doing. You will only be able to see where they were really at when you achieve transcendental realization and reach the stage that all the enlightened ones share in common. I recall this story from olden times. Matsao said to Zhang Tang, Have you ever read the scriptural teachings? Zhang Tang said, Are the scriptural teachings any different? Mao Tsao said, If you haven't read the scriptures, how will you be able to explain for people in various ways? And Zhang Tang said, I must take care for my own sickness. How could I dare try to help other people? And Matsao said, in your later years, you are sure to rise to greatness in the world. <laughs> and that's just the way it turned out later. As we carefully consider the ancients, they did not achieve great penetration and great enlightenment toward the one great causal condition. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> did they not? Not, they did not. <laughs> did they not? Achieve great penetration and great enlightenment toward the one great causal condition leading to transcendence? They cut off words and imagery and divorced themselves from the confusion of conditioned discrimination. They just knew for themselves, enjoying peace and freedom alone in a state of rest. Yet Masao still spurred Zai Tang on sternly like this, wanting him to, incur to achieve complete mastery of adaptive transformation without sticking to one corner or getting bogged down in one place. We must fully comprehend at all times past and present and practice harmonious integration, merging into wholeness with no boundaries. It is important in the course of helping people and receiving oncomers from all sides that we fish out at least one or two burnt tails with the potential to become vessels of the Dharma. From within the cave of weeds, people fit into or fit to become seedlings of the life of wisdom. Isn't this the work of using expedient means to repay the benevolence and virtue of the Buddhas and ancestral teachers? You must master your spirit so that whenever you impart some expedient tech teachings, you have the ability in every move to come out with the body of enlightenment and avoid blinding people's eyes. You will do no good if you misunderstand the result and were wrong about the causal basis. This is the most essential path for spiritual friends and teachers. 
the great teacher, Hoi Nan of Hun Nang Long Temple, once said, I'm sure he said that too. The job of a teacher is to sit upright in the abbot's room and receive all comers with the fundamental matter. The other minor businesses should be entrusted to administrator monks. Then everything will be accomplished. How true these words are. When, as a Zen teacher, you employ people as administrative assistants, you must take great care in entrusting them with the appropriate responsibilities, so that affairs are not mishandled. Jin Ru of Daguai Temple said, there is no special trick to being a Zen teacher and guiding a community of learners. All that's important is to be skillful in employing people. Please think this over. A proverb says, Cleverness is not as good as a reliable model. Bai Zhang established a set of guidelines for Zen communities, and no one has ever been able to overthrow them. Now you should just follow these guidelines consciously consciously conscientiously consciously that word has always confused me and take the lead in observing them yourself and do not violate by Zhang's elegant standards then everyone in your congregation will follow them too in the final breakthrough a past robe monk penetrates through to freedom from birth and death to succeed at this, you must know the move that a thousand sages cannot trap, and the move, or the move that cuts off the root of life. The ancient worthies greatly imbued with the Tao could skillfully capture or release, could skillfully kill or bring life. All the teachers who had attained great liberation used these techniques. It is not difficult to know about such methods. Whether or not you have mastered them shows up in how you do things. When you can cut through decisively and make them work instantaneously in the situation, only then do you, detain, do you attain power in the long run. Our ancestral teacher, Yang Kui, spoke of the diamond cane and the thicket of thorns, and used them to distinguish dragons and snakes, and capture tigers and rhinos. If you are a genuine descendant of his family, then you will be bring them forth at ease and cut off the tongues of Zen monks. The True School of Linji The True School of Linji opened its great potential from Linji's great predecessors, Matsao and Hongbao, unfurling its great function, escaping all cages, leaving all nests, charging like tigers and galloping like dragons flying like shooting stars, streaking like lightning. The adepts of the Linji school rolled up and rolled out, captured and released, always employing expedient means based on the fundamental, always continuous and accurate. When it came to Fing Chui, Fing Hua, the teaching of the school became more and more lofty and its workings more and more steep. West River sports with the lion, frost flower emerges or energizes the Diamond King. <sighs> and no one could have had or no one could have a clue what the Linji school was all about without entering deeply into the inner sanctum and personally receiving the seal of the pro and promise of enlightenment. Uninitiated observers just gave their own arbitrary names and descriptions to what they thought they saw, only adding to the foolish wordplay. Even having to, even having the metal to storm heaven and upholding truth outside conventions, even defeating people's weapons without fighting and killing without batting an eye, even this does not quite resemble what the Linji school is getting at. <laughs> Nor, for that matter, does switching around the constellations uh, and turning the pivot of heaven on and on the axis of the earth. Therefore, Linji and his successors taught using such devices as the Three Mysteries and the Three Essentials, 
and the four perspectives, and the four levels of guest and host, and the diamond king's precious sword, and the lion crouched to spring, and the shout not acting as a shout, and the probing pole and the reed shade, and distinguishing guest from host, and illumination and action in a single shout. They use so many lines at once. So many scholars have tried to access these techniques and add explanations without realizing in the least that their assessments are totally unfounded because there is no such blade in our sovereign's ar armory. When the adepts of the Lin Chi school bring forth some device for you to see, it happens in the blink of an eye. You must be the superior type of learner who has achieved realization and experiential recognition of the Zen message. Receiving it straight on and bringing it up from the side, you must be a true seedling of the school. How could you depend on intermediaries? When Bashal first appeared in his teaching hall, Shishang pushed a monk forward, and Bashal immediately hit him. Shishang said, If you help people like this, not only have you blinded this monk, but you've blinded the eyes of everyone in the whole city. And Bichelle threw down the teacher's staff and returned to his quarters. Once, when Tsing Hua saw a fellow student approaching, he immediately shouted. The other monk also shouted. Tsing Hua shouted again. And the other monk also shouted again. Tsing Hua said, look at this blind man. And then drove him out of the teaching hall with blows. One of his attendants asked, and what was this monk's offense? And Tsing Hua said, he had both the provisional and the real, but I made two passes at him right in front of his face, and yet he did not understand. If I don't beat a blind guy like this one, when would I ever beat anyone? Please observe the true style of the Linji school as it is displayed in these stories. It is absolutely transcendent and does not value any particular strategy. The correctness of one's eye for the truth is the only thing it considers important. If you want to uphold the true school and maintain the eye of the source, you must be completely liberated from head to foot, with a liberation that penetrates the bone and penetrates the marrow and is not entangled with anything whatsoever. Only then can you truly succeed to the Linchi school. Only then can you set up the great banner of this teaching and light the great lamp of this teaching. Only then. Can you continue the work of Metzal and Bagzang and Shaoshan and Yangqui without being a usurper? Ooh, I like this guy. I love this guy. He mom. Yeah. Last one. Transmitting wisdom. For Buddha's pure transmission on spirit P. For Bodhidharma's secret bequest of a uh, few houses mountain. You must stand out beyond categories and apart from <laughs> Let me have a retake. Ah, excuse me. I do want a little bit of cigarette. Okay. For Buddha's pure transmission of Spirit Peak. For Bodhidharma's secret bequest on Few Houses Mountain, you must stand out beyond categories and apart from conventions and test it in the movements of the wind-blown dust and grasses. With your eyes shining bright, you penetrate through obscurities and recognize what is happening on the other side of this page of the mountain. You swallow your sound and eliminate your traces without leaving behind anything whatsoever. Yet you can set in motion waves that go against the current and employ the ability that cuts off the flow. You go right up to people and nip them. You're swift as a falcon that gets mistaken for a shadow as it soars into the air with its back into the deep blue sky. In the blink of an eye, it's gone. Point to it, and it comes. Press it, and it goes. It is unstoppably lofty and pure. This is the way 
this is the way this true source is put into circulation, to serve as a model, a standard for later generations. All those who would communicate the message of the source must be able to kill a person's false personality without blinking an eye. Only then can they enter into it actively. One example was old man Hongbo. Who knew of this state innately? When he was on his travels, he came to Mount Tantai, or Tai, where he saw a saint walking across the raves, cutting off a torrent. Hungbo immediately wanted to strike him dead. When he reached Basang and heard the story about how a, cell, a, a single shot from Matsao had left Basang dead, deaf for three days, he drew back and stuck out his tongue. We know this was the action of Hungbo's great potential, or potential. How could those with simplistic opinions and shallow learning form any opinion of it? Later on, Hugbo taught our ancestral teacher, Lin Shi, and used the whole essence of this. By not holding, by not holding back his compassion, Hugbo formed Lin Shi into a capable successor who would give shelter to everyone in the world. People with the will to teach the truth must be fully developed and thoroughly polished to make them go beyond conventions and transcend sects. After this, they will have the means to take away the hungry man's food and dry off the pl or drive off the plowman's ox. So, they can continue the traditional guidance function and not mistaking turning around and turning away. They can only be seedlings of, the, of transcendence when, at the least subtle level, level, they can see through every drop. And at the expansive level, even a thousand stages cannot find them. Old Master Zhu Feng used to say, even Shakyamuni Buddha and Maitreya Buddha are his servants. Ultimately, who is he? How can this admit how can this admit of arbitrary and confused probing? You will only get anywhere if you know he exists. In general, when as a Zen teacher you should energize the indomitable spirit of a great person in your disciples and make them move ahead into the superior stream, you must set to work and make them so they cannot be trapped and cannot be called back. As you help people and respond to their potential, it should all be clear and free. You mustn't roll around in the nest of weeds or play with your spirit in the ghost cave. If the supposed teacher uses contrived concepts of mysteries and marvels and essence of truth, if he cocks his eyebrows and puts a gleam in his eye and cavorts around uttering apt sayings, and thereby binds the sons of daughters of others people's families with doctrines he claims are absolute realities, then he is just a blind man leading a crowd of blind people. How can this produce any genuine expedient teachings? Since you already occupy the position of being called a teacher, you certainly cannot take it lightly. For your own part, you must be impeccable aloof, transcendent, like a lion on the prow, with a spirit that frightens the crowd. You must always be unfathomable as you appear and disappear and release and capture. Suddenly, the lion crouches down and springs forward, and all the other animals scatter in a panic. Isn't this especially extraordinary? If you are such a person, then you have already discerned the outline of this from 3,000 miles away. That is why Yantao said, an enlightened teacher is like a gourd on the water, floating free and at ease. Who cannot be reined in or tied down? When you make contact with the truth, then it covers heaven and earth. Always nurturing it and putting it into practice, you arrive on this stage. Only then do you have a share in the one line that comes from Spirit Peak and Few Houses Mountain. Only then can you take turns as guest and host with Hongbo, Lin Chi, Yan Tao, and Sui Fing. 
Only then will your teaching be effective. So that when the wind blows, the grass has been down. And you will not have appeared in the world as a Zen teacher in vain. Uphold and disseminate the Dharma for 20 or 30 years. And then, among the others, there will naturally be those who can share in the stream of this realization with you. People of learning and perception who will join you in protecting it. Who says that no one perceives the priceless pearl? I say the black dragon's pearl shines forth wherever it is. I guess that'll do for us today.